What's up, everybody? My name is Dad Radish, and I am your vegetable father. It's been a little while, but I'm here today to talk about a topic near and dear to my heart. It's Android Netrunner. So, uh, if you're watching this, you probably know what Netrunner is. It's a cyberpunk themed 1v1 card game um it was uh, designed originally by richard garfield and had a run in the kind of like mid to late 90s um they got picked up again later by fantasy flight games and um, they published a version of it they decided not to renew the, the license and that was pretty sad for a whole bunch of people really loved the game and then it got picked up by a community run uh group called nisei that uh made sure games were going and they've been releasing cards and it's everything's been super good um but just get back to the game a little bit it's it's the thing that's really special about it is that it's asymmetric so deep into the cyberpunk theme uh, one player is a corporation trying to advance these secret agendas and continue taking over the world in their sort of special way and the other player is a hacker trying to get access to those secrets um so it's this kind of um it's just a different kind of game the corpse trying to like hide things and move things around and protect things and the runners trying to find clever ways to to get it get in and and uh basically steal cards from different places so um i'm kind of interested in making more introductory content um i think i mean there's a lot out there and uh people understandably want to introduce people to this really great uh kind of complicated game uh, but for now, it's kind of like a test. I'm going to uh, pop through a replay uh, of a really fun game I played a few days ago. So, uh, But I'll just sort of, before I get into it, I'll say it's a super exciting time for Netrunner. It's a great time to get into the game. It's a great time to get back into the game if you played a little bit at some time. Um, basically, when, uh, yeah, the, the company Fantasy Flight Games had the license and they decided to stop making it in 2018, the community kind of came together and said, no, we're not going to let this happen. Um, they formed this group called Nisei um, and they organized gameplay, they organized tournaments and they designed new sets. They've been organizing, paying artists to make art, to make art for the cards. Um, so what we have of a few weeks ago, uh, there's this really amazing new set called System Gateway. Uh, those are the cards that I'm playing with in this, this, ver this version of the game. Um, and they're just really fun. They, you have the kind of thing where a game that that's been refined over decades if you decide to kind of think about well what should this game look like for uh super new players like what what do you want to teach new players about this game like you, you can do it uh you, you can refine something really really nice and interesting and i feel like they've made the game interesting for for veterans too people who really who love this game and played comp a really complicated version of it there's something kind of nice about diving into the simple version too um a refreshed simple version so anyway i'm gonna get this card this replay um uh yeah and we'll see if we can get more network content going um in the future um let me peek over and see what's happening um stream all right so this has been techie this is the software people use to um to uh, keep track of the game. Let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, people used to play it online. It's, um, again, community run. The client <laughs> or the community uh, uh, helps develop this client. There are a couple of lead developers and, and uh, people are good, so it's kind of qu quite an amazing thing. All right, so Corp starts the game. I started the game here. Um, this is my hand. Uh, I feel pretty good about, about this hand. I think I mulliganed uh, when I started this. Uh, let me just double check. No, it was a keep. So I kept my hand. Uh, I had two pieces of ice here, which is what I was really looking for. Can I protect uh, R&D and HQ right away? So, um, yeah, so but, but for my first uh, turn, I drew a card, um, and then I installed ice over HQ and R&D. Um, I know that uh, I have a financial card, a money to kind of, or a card to get money, get ahead. Um, but it's government subsidy. It costs 10 to play, and I start out with five credit. So I know that it's going to be kind of like, it's going to be a bit of a slide to, to get there. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, kind of step through. Let's see what's going on. 
All right, so the runner is uh, Rene Lu, um, and this runner is in the Anarch faction. Um, just break shit, burn things. So uh, the first time you turn, you trash a card you're accessing, gain a credit, and draw one card. So uh, pretty powerful ability. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see it come into play. Oh, I just talk about my identity too, so I'm a corporation. Um, the first time each turn the runner takes a tag, I can gain two credits or draw two cards. So that's also feels super powerful, feels uh, really good when it when it triggers. And there's flexibility, right? If you need money, you can take money, or if you need the cards, you can draw cards. So, um, okay. So right off the bat, plays Wildcat Strike. Um, this is a pretty inexpensive card for the runner to play too, um, but it gives me the corporation choice. I get to decide whether the runner gets money or gets cards. Um, the kind of discourse in the community is that it, it's almost never correct to, to give the runner cards. Um, and I think that that's basically what happens here. I'm pretty sure I give them the money. So let's see what happens. Yep, I chose six for the runner. So you see their credit pool um, got boosted they're kind of set up financially um so yeah they're doing more money set up here this is a cookbook so when they install a virus program they can put a virus counter an extra virus counter on it and this card the way this works is um it's kind of a single use card it accrues these virus counters and then um, at a certain point the uh runner can choose to uh, take an action on their turn turn trash it and then they get two times the number of virus counters on it um, as credits all right um so i'm still setting up here luckily i haven't drawn any other agendas and this is when i start trying to build um server one up um i put down a palisade this is kind of um good basic ice it has an end the run subroutine it gets extra strength on on um on servers so that's good um what else do i do here Gain a credit, gain a credit. So I'm kind of inching my way to the 10 credits I need to play government subsidy. Um, then I can gain five, um, go up to 15, leap ahead a little bit, uh, res, ice, um, you know, protect things. All right, so uh, runner's drawing up, play sure gamble. So the runner's setting up too. Um, DZMZ optimizer, another cool um, uh, kind of uh, inexpensive setup card adds a memory unit, they can install more programs and then makes their programs cheaper. Um, okay, so I'm still building up server one here. Credit, credit, again, inching my way. Runner turn. Um, case isn't obvious, the runner starts with um, four actions they can do a turn. I st uh, the corporation has three. So uh, for their four actions, uh, this uh, the runner I'm playing against is draw, draw, draw. So uh, uh, three draws and then installs another fermenter. So at this point, you know, uh, basically every turn they're getting the potential of um, four credits um, kind of really building up there. Um, oh, and it starts off uh, charged up with two, two uh, virus tokens because of cookbook. So all right, my turn, what do I do with my three? Uh, this is tough. Around here, there's an action I can take called Purge that would, uh, if I use up my whole turn, I use three actions in my turn, I can uh, purge all these counters off. Um, and I'm pretty sure I decide not to do that. Um, yeah, it's a huge tempo hit. So this is what this looks like to me when I start this turn. I have eight credits. I have three things I can do. Credit, credit brings me to ten. And the last thing I can do in my turn is play a government subsidy and finally get the economy I feel like I need to res this ice, uh, res any ice really, and then also get this um, agenda in the server and uh, start scoring points. Um, okay, boom, boom, boom. That's what I do. So the runner is setting up, what is this? This is a, a draw card again. Um, and then they crack open that first fermenter. Um, it had five virus tokens on it. They gain 10. Um, they have more money to, to do more setup. So they get out their console carnivore. So this changes the game in a big way. It allows the runner to, um, whenever they're looking at a card that, that's uh, accessing a card in one of my servers, they can um, trash it by discarding cards out of their own, their own hand. Um, this includes cards that you couldn't ordinarily trash. Um, so that's a pretty special ability. And then they kind of um, telegraph something here. They put down Mayfly. So in the set, Mayfly is a single use um, 
uh, icebreaker. You can use it during one run to break uh, to break the ice that's protecting the server. So um, it's uh, low cost. It's high MU, so that's um, kind of an interesting property of it. It's uh, low strength, um, but it can it can if you have enough money, you can kind of get through anything. So they have a lot of credits, and and so this is kind of like not a lot's going to stop this, um, but it could drain them of credits. So I have a choice here. Um, and the choice is, do I install this in server one and start advancing it, which is how I get my points, or do I put this in the server, which is um, an ambush asset? So when I put these things down, either of these, they look the same to the runner, um, but um, the effects are different. This, this the runner wants to steal. Um, if I advance this, then I get the points. Um, this is just a trap. If the runner accesses this, then it does net damage, which means um, random cards are pulled out of their hand. Um, so, uh, and it, it um, intensifies, it deals more damage based on how many advancement tokens, how much I invest in it. Um, and inv uh, advancing a card is, is si sort of a sign of, it, it costs a credit, costs a click, costs a, 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 an action. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway. So let's kind of step forward and see what happens here. I drew a money card, so I play um, I play that, uh, gain five. So now I have 19 credits. We're both kind of set up with a lot of economy here. Um, and then what I did was I installed the uh, the uh, Urtica Cypher. I installed the trap and I gave it one advancement token. So kind of, um, this is a trap. It's a bait to the runner, but uh, in the chat, uh, they say, <laughs> the first thing they say after this is they go, hmm, <laughs> because they signal Mayfly and they have a lot of money. And for me to put something in a server is, um, it's well, it's not a smart play. Um, on the other hand, um, I have to do something, right? I can't just sit and let my hand fill with agendas. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe you got to do something. So it does the kind of smart thing, runs first click in case any of this ice is um, biroid ice that you can use clicks to get past instead of an icebreaker or another mechanism. Um, so yeah, let me wait, let me step back. Oh, I got to step through it a little bit. So I decide to res this first card. It's called, uh, it's an ice called ping. So it has this one time effect when you flip it up uh, upright during a run. Um, you uh, give the runner one tag. So that's pretty cool. Um, with my identity, that means I give them a tag and then I get this thing, this thing happens right away. I gain two or draw two cards. So that's cool. Um, I decided to draw two cards, wanted to give myself some more options. Um, they decide to use Mayfly. They use Mayfly to get past it. I have the next choice, which is whether or not to res this. And this is why you set up and have a lot of credits is so you can just make these choices. So I go ahead and res this. Um, and the runner uses Mayfly to get past it again. They pay for, so they're kind of um, getting through their credit pool a little bit. And at this point, they actually have a choice here. You know, by the game rules, they can choose to stop um, if they see something in my behavior that makes it seem like I was too eager uh, for them to get through this. They can stop, but runner chose to keep going. They access um, uh, they access Urtica Cipher, and what ends up getting trashed is they're left with the Carnivore up here. So um, they lose Red Team, which is economy card. They lose Buzzsaw, which is a um, icebreaker program that you can use to get past these. Um, and they lose another Carnivore, which doesn't matter too much. They already have one. They already have one out. So uh, interesting. It's a little bit of a tempo hit for them. Um, so yeah, that uh, agenda goes into the archives for me. Um, and yeah, so what do they do? They spend, I think, the rest of the turn, or most of the rest of the turn, drawing cards. Um, and they spend their last uh, click uh, getting rid of this tag. So they pay two and a click, uh, two credits and a click to get rid of the tag. If they keep the tag, then I can do some kind of nasty stuff on my turn. I can target their programs. Um, okay. So it's back to my turn, and I remember I have kind of an interesting question here. Um, roughly the question for me is, do they have Mayfly? Because uh, I have the server. Um, it has, uh, well, it's same kind of ice. They're both barrier ice, but they have end the run clauses on them. Um, will I be able to stick an agenda in the server and keep the runner out? 
Um, and so I think I sort of test that. I do something to protect HQ. This is a bit silly, but I have agendas in hand and this upgrade um, will let me deal tags to the to the opponent um, if they uh, get, a, get an agenda out of my hand. So I can kind of make them pay a bit of a cost for getting through. Um, and then I decide to install this one. Uh, it's it's a four advancement cost agenda. So um, I need to do finish up my turn with an advancement token. And then my plan is next turn, I have three actions, advance, advance, advance. That gets me to the four and then I can score these two points. Runner goes um, and they put down a barrier breaker. I didn't know they had it. Um, and this is just uh, the perfect antidote to what I have going on here. So, uh, oh, let me step, it, step back through this. So they're able to get through. It costs them a little bit. They have to pay out of their breakers. You can see their credit pool draining a little bit as they pay um, to get through, but it doesn't drain by, by much. Um, and then they're able to get the, the, um, the agenda. So they get two points. We're playing seven points. Um, let's see. So they draw a card. All right, I'm starting my turn seven. So I think I drew a money card. Let me see, let me just double check. Is that what happens here? No, I've had this for a little, a few turns now, but I play it just to kind of refill my credits. And then I play Public Trail, which um, is one of the kind of spicier cards in the, in the new set. Um, if it uh, costs me four to play and I can give the runner a tag, or if they make a successful run in their turn, then on my follow-up turn, I can play this, give the runner a tag unless they pay eight. So um, it can be a pretty big swing. And here the runner decides to take the tag. So they're kind of taking a risk. They don't want to go low on credits because it'll give me a chance to um, maybe score an agenda behind the server, um, do some other shenanigans. Um, and I follow up by playing uh, Retribution. So if the runner's tagged, uh, I can play this pretty inexpensive card to trash an installed program or piece of hardware. Um, this is the kind of interaction that I think is um, um, hmm. How do I describe this? In a game like Magic the Gathering, you're constantly like trading cards. Your cards are constantly like interacting with each other, fighting each other, and like taking each other off the board. Um, you're making a lot of choices like that. I mean, Netrunner, a lot of stuff that hits the board, um, it stays. So if you're the corporation, a lot of the ice will stay. Um, if you're a runner, a lot of your programs will stay. Only in, in special conditions do uh, our cards sort of removed out, uh, out of the game like that. This is one of those special conditions. You might get to do this once or uh, once or maybe twice, um, twice a game. Um, so it's a pretty big move to, to, to do something like this. It's nice flavor-wise, right? So here's a <laughs> the corporation is sending a team to smash up uh, the runner's apartment. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I decided to get rid of this barrier breaker. It's the thing that's allowing the server to be really porous um, to the runner. Runner draws. Uh, let's see. I gave them a tag. They, uh, they uh, took an action to take it off and then they um, continued uh, gaining money. I draw a card. I try to make this even a little bit more protected. I want to put a different kind of ice on there, so I put on a code gate. Um, and then I install um, a three-point agenda. So I can just do this. I can install this as my last click. Next turn, I can go advance, 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 and get it out. So the runner draws some cards. Uh, they put Botulus on the server. Uh, this can use virus counters to break subroutines. Um, pardon me for one second, I'm gonna go uh, turn off single mode here. So we can hear some other trip mirror music. Um, let's see. Right. So this is um, a method of breaking ice that's not um, like an like a conventional icebreaker. It doesn't sort of sit on your rig, rather. It sits on the ice and, and makes it breakable. Um, so yeah, then they do a run on HQ. And this is a tricky kind of uh, uh, probability game. Uh, I look at this and I say, I have, 
my choice here is well should i first of all should i rest this and i said no because it has it's going to cost me money and they're going to be able to break it with this thing doesn't matter to me um there's only one agenda in hq and with the effect of this card they're going to get to look at two cards in my hand so um i don't res this i could but i don't because i'm like the odds are not that great that they're going to pull the agenda um they get a chance to trash it that's fine with me that's like a tax of three credits on on them um and then <laughs> they get the agenda <laughs> um and they, they trashed an economic card I had. Uh, let's see, let me go back to that step. So I have this card. They use Carnivore to trash it. And then they uh, get the agenda. So now it's at five points. Um, most agendas I have in my deck, they will, um, they can, they'll win with them. Um, so yeah, where do I go from here? Well, I have this agenda, so I continue with my plan. So it's advance 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 score so i'm on the board it's you know it's not it's imperfect but uh the my opponent has a tag and um helps me do some of the things i want to do uh what did i do with oh i gained i gained credits because running a little thin so that's what i did with the bonus i get from tagging the runner all right mm. what did i do here Gain money, remove the tag. Oh, they do other things. Hold on, let me back up a little bit. Oh, they play Wildcat Strike. So I decide what to do here. And why did I decide to do cards? Well, I decided to do cards because uh, they have five credits. And so uh, I'm like, they don't have that many credits. I'm going to experiment with this, knowing that the community <laughs> believes that um, that cards is not the right solution. Solution. So I say, OK, let's do cards here. Um, they're low on credit, so it's going to cost them something to play these cards. Um, I know they have to clear a tag, so uh, the cl clearing a tag costs two. So they have a lot of pressure on their economy right now. Let me go ahead and give them cards. And so the first thing they do is play Sure Gamble, <laughs> which they had in their hand before they played the Wildcat Strike. So it's you could say that it's not my fault, but you can already start to see how I'm like, nah, maybe the cards, this is exactly what they say about cards, why it's not the right answer. Um, they have the cleaver that makes this server uh, porous again um, so yeah I protect HQ a little bit more I have two agendas in hand so I you know and with uh, botulus right here this this ice basically does nothing or I expect it to do nothing um, I want to get the agendas out, out of hand I want to kind of like push make it more complicated uh, of a choice to choose between these two servers um, and I gotta make something happen here, so I advance uh, orbital superiority. I have this kind of thing brewing in the back of my head. If um, if ping goes off, it gives the runner a tag. So, and if the runner decides to keep the tag, and then I can res orbital superiority. Um, Normally, when scored, this just gives the runner a tag, but if the runner's already tagged and you score this card, uh, you do four meat damage, which is four cards out of the opponent's hand. If you deal damage to the runner and they have zero cards in hand, um, you win the game. That's a way for the corporation to win the game. So that's pretty exciting to me. It um, It's just sort of like an outside opportunity that I kind of like get from, uh, from just just the way the game sort of like evolved um second win condition uh so they play another economy card red team so here we go it's like i fed them you know my feeling at this point which is partially true is like they did wildcat strike i gave them cards um when they were low on economy it gave them an economy <laughs> so they start running archives um each one of these runs allows them to take three credits from this card so that happens um, oh, let me just double check what happens when they hit R&D. Oh, nothing this time. Uh, they, I think, don't do anything with that card. They do a special run here using a card. It makes the res cost of everything cost more. This messes me up a little bit because now resing this um, costs five instead of two, um, leaving me with one credit. It means I can't safely advance this it means that a bunch of my plan is messed up but 
On the other hand, knowing that they have have um, some money here, they can get through the server easily. So I think it only costs them two credits to get through. So I have to res this. I have to make it a challenge. Um, and it bounces them. It keeps them out of the server, taxes them a little bit. So at least it puts us at parity, um, even though that's not really what I wanted to do with my turn. So I can't advance this out. I just, at this point, I'm kind of deciding, do I draw any cards or do I just take money? And um, this is pretty straightforward. Just take the money. Um, the runner starts their turn. They draw. They run archives to money up. They run R&D. Um, here I decide to do something that I think of as, I I'm starting to see it here coming together. If I res this and they decide to take all these the subroutines here, it'll do one net damage, which means they have four cards in hand, a little closer to getting destroyed um, by um, orbital superiority. Um, and I gain a credit, so this becomes cost neutral for me. I'm able to still continue with the other parts of my plan. So let's see. All those things fire, they access a card, uh, they decide to trash it. It would actually be useful for me in the game in a world where the game ran a little bit longer. Um, it's a uh, seamless launch, which allows me to pay one to advance a card twice. Um, the thing is, the card can't have been installed this turn, so. Okay. So then they run HQ, and I have uh, one, one agenda in hand. They're going to get to see two cards. So I think that's, that, is that a little better than a 50, 50? Cause it's like a 25 and then the, the first card is removed. So it's a third, uh, third, uh, yeah. So anyway, probably better than a 50, 50. I decided to res the ping here and I feel kind of excited. The runner has zero clicks, which means they're ending this, uh, they're ending their turn uh, tagged. Uh, if I can still have three credits, get through my turn, have three credits, I advance this and I win by uh, by uh, killing the runner with uh, with the satellite. Um, missiles from a satellite. So let's see. They use Botulus, get through this easily. And the first card they access is Offworld Office. They get the agenda. Uh, they're at five points. This is worth two points. Um, they, they get to seven and they win the game. So that is, uh, yeah, that was the game. It was so, so close to, <laughs> to getting this, um, uh, winning by, uh, by damage. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was a really exciting game. So I'll be back with more Netrunner replays. Hopefully if this was really, uh, Greek to you, uh, you got a chance to see a little bit of how, um, it's just a different kind of card game. It's a card game about bluffing. It's a card game about, um, kind of reading risk um um yeah and if you're more experienced hopefully it was uh it was fun to see this if you're thinking about getting back into netrunner now is a great time so thanks again uh wanted to give some shout outs and credit zoe cohen for uh the art on the the intro cover and uh, trip mirror for the music we've been listening to uh trip mirror on bandcamp has um some albums called, uh, or with a, the subtitle or titles, Always Be Running. It's a, a series of three albums. All the music is inspired by uh, Netrunner. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, really like it. So thanks again. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next time for uh, more streaming, more Netrunner. Bye.